You're alive. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, welcome to You Choose, which is a choose your own adventure style show where we intend to navigate our way through the entire CNCF landscape. Uh, I'm Whitney Lee. I'm joined with Victor Barsic, my um the the ball of sunshine that is a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Sunshine and rainbows over there. Actually, where you are right now kind of does sound like I hear birds chirping. Yep, I'm on a terrace in Mexico. Uh, lovely. It's too cold for me to stay home. <laughs> in Barcelona, was freezing for you. <laughs> when you get used to it, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so we're on chapter. Chapter one, episode two now, our second show. This is so exciting. So what did we uh, what did we do last week to get us to this point where we're choosing a container registry? We figured out that we need to build container images and uh, because without container images, there are no containers. And we did that, we explored three projects. Lima, it's which is not strictly for building images, but Lima, which is virtualization technology in a way, uh, can work with NerdCuttle. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that well. NerdCuttle, NerdCTL, something like that. Anyways, uh, which is CLI replacement for Docker. So uh, whatever you would do with Docker, you can do with NerdCuttle, including building images. Then we went through BuildPux or cloud native BuildPux uh, that uh, allows us to build images without Docker file just based on source code, it figures out, evaluates the, the code you have in a repo and just figures everything out and builds an image. And then we went through KBuilder, which it builds on top of uh, BuildPux, not only BuildPux, but other technologies as well. Yeah. Anyways, what it does is that it takes, it builds the image using any of the tools for building images and then it, uh, modifies your Kubernetes manifests so that they include the tag of the image that you just built. It skips one of the steps, right? Because it's not only about building images, images it's about uh, making sure uh, that uh, those images, tags of those images are in your Kubernetes manifests. Excellent. So we had three guests on, one representing each technology. Everyone stated their case. We had a really great discussion, lots of questions from chats. And then we put it to a vote. We put a vote out on Twitter and we got the response. Wait, oh, come on, Victor. I wanted to, ah, I wanted to like okay. make like a, I wanted to really play it up. <laughs> Let me make okay, a, like go, a, go, like, go. bum, bum, da, da, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and now, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 Cloud native build packs are the one we're not going to say winner, but the ones that people chose that we're going to move forward with and build that into our demo. So to go on about cloud native build packs a little bit more. So what it inputs is application source code. And what the output is, is an OCI compliance container image. So as a developer, that's all you need to know. Like it's a dead simple user experience. But then as a platform engineer, you can encode all of your best practices into the builder that's happening in between. So there are lots of tools you can use to implement build packs. The one we're going to use today is the pack CLI, which is maintained by the build pack uh, project. And um, so when you run the pack CLI, the build command, it's going to spin up an application that is a builder. That's whole job is to, can you still hear me? I just lost sound from what I can hear. You're good. Okay. You're good. Oh, you just You're muted. Good. Okay. <laughs> I'm Without myself. the birds. <laughs> Got you. Um, <laughs> So, so it spins up a builder and what that builder does is it analyzes the source code and it detects what's there and what build packs are needed to build it. And then it creates a build plan and it goes through and builds the image and you get the final, the final OCI compliant image. But if it's an update of a previous build, it recognizes what layers are the same. So it doesn't rebuild those images. So it has an extremely efficient build and a, and a reproducible build. And then finally, it does really well with rebasing. So the OS layer, if there's a CVE, it can rebase, it could change out that OS layer without having to rebuild the whole image. Is that a good synopsis? Did I miss anything? Chat, who was here last week? No. Is there anything else we need to say about build packs? Yeah, cool. That's great. <laughs> that was great. Excellent. So, do you want to see them in action? Victor, are you going to show us how to build 
Images with build packs? Yes. 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 I'm actually going to uh, do the same steps as anybody else. Uh, but before I do that, there's this repository that contains all the source code uh, and all the commands, instructions, everything, everything, everything. And even though we chose build packs, we chose it so that I implement it now you know, in, a, in a minute, right? But anybody can go and make any of the choices. So you're not forced to use build packs. You can just go to the repo, follow the instructions, choose any of the three or four or five choices, whatever number of choices we will have in the future and just go, right? Now, um, so I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Uh, can you put me on the screen, Whitney? Uh, yes, yeah, uh, so please. There we go. There we go, right? So this uh -huh. is the repo. Uh, text, pitch, rules, all the stuff. Uh, what does matter here is that you can either go through the diagram, which will grow over time, or you can just click the link uh, setup, right? I'm not going to do the setup now. Uh, I already did that, but I want to call it out because it contains all the instructions you need for this whole chapter, not only for this episode, but for everything that we will do uh, within the first chapter. And at the bottom, build container image. Uh, Whitney was so amazing putting all the text. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, and uh, there we go. I need to go to the bottom. There we go. Uh, Cloud native build packs and the instructions are here. So uh, let me switch to my uh, terminal export tag equals. Now some, tr some things are going to sound weird because uh, uh, like I'm exporting now a variable. I'm doing that only so that we reference that variable later in, in future episodes. Um, and I will change the setting YAML uh, so that in the future episodes you know what, what you did. Everything stored is stored there. Uh, what does matter is that I'm going to configure pack to use Paketo build packs. Uh, there are other build packs you can choose from. Just Google them, you will find them. And now comes the most important part. Uh, pack build the name of the image and the tag, which is in this case 001. And it will take a moment or two. There we go. Actually, I'm cheating a bit. I already built the image earlier uh, to save you some time. Uh, and this is a good demonstration that it actually figured it out and only builds things that changed since the since the last time I built an image. There we go, almost there. We, we need to talk about something while waiting. I don't know what to talk about. <laughs> so you said we chose but Paquito build packs, but you also there were setting a, a default builder. So that, that application yes. that comes up that actually makes the thing is, is a builder. And so there are several defaults that the community has chosen, but if you were implementing this at an organizational level, that builder would be where you, you put in the organizational best practices, that particular things that you want to follow. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. By choosing a pack, you're, by, you can use any pack and within packs, there are different builders depending on the programming language. And uh, you just choose a pack or you leave the default one, which is good choice usually. Anyways, uh, my image is built and I'm going to demonstrate the time. I can't see here. on your screen, Victor. It's, do you want me to cover up the? Uh, you don't see the terminal? Uh, I can see the terminal, but where you're writing is, let me, is behind the. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, I can't see what you're typing Docker. basically. There we go. Nice image ls and there we go cncf demo built easy and i built it 43 years ago <laughs> <laughs> that's uh <laughs> specialty of build packs nothing really special ignore the time i built it right now and it's 43 megabytes big and uh now we need to figure out the next step and the next step is what are we going to do with that image what happens now so we need to choose a container registry to store our image in. And we have some guests on today to help us make that decision by uh, <coughs> making a case for their particular technology. Let me take off um, the, the URL for the demo.
Or maybe you can do that, Victor. I don't know how you... There you go. Magic. So now we're going to bring on our guests. We're going to say hello first to Vadim Bauer. Hello. Vadim's a maintainer for the Harbor Container Registry Projects, but also Vadim's going to represent um, Docker Hub today, or more specifically, distribution. Vadim, tell us about yourself. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Vadim. I'm one of the maintainers of Project Harbor, and I also have a, a business around container registries and container images. So I'm representing both projects today because um, well, Harbor is using Fusion, but then more about that later. Yes. And then we also have on today, Alan Sun. Welcome, Alan. Alan's a maintainer for Dragonfly. Tell us about yourself, Alan. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Alan Sun, and uh, I am the maintainer of Dragonfly. Uh, actually, I've already taken part in the cloud cloud native ecosystem for about uh, six or seven years and uh, uh, wish um, we could have fun with more cloud native technologies and uh, and uh, more funny things yeah that's all <laughs> excellent um, I'm gonna take you both off of the screen for a moment Victor and I are gonna have a quick conversation and hopefully with chat about what what even makes a good container registry what are we looking for when we're hearing about these projects so thanks for saying hi, and we'll see you both again shortly. Victor, what makes so a good container registry? <laughs> I mean, there is there is the the base feature, right? That mm -hmm. is absolutely a must, and that's that it needs to be capable of storing container images uh, somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And it's very important to store it in a container registry for a simple reason uh, that the place where you build an image is unlikely going to be a place where you run it, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to build it on my laptop, for example, and then it's going to run on any of the hundred servers I have in my cluster, right? Mm -hmm. So it needs to go somewhere and from that somewhere to be pulled uh, if you're using Kubernetes uh, by the scheduler on a specific node, right? Mm -hmm. So the base really feature is can it store images? Now on That's, top of yeah. that, Go, okay. In the end, that's what a reg registry is, right? It's just a server that stores and shares container images. Yeah. Yeah, it's a glorified uh, file system uh, manager. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and then on top of that, there are a lot of other additional features that are beyond just storing images, right? It, mm -hmm. can run, it can scan your images for security vulnerabilities. So, versioning? It can, uh, it can like version, your... I mean, yeah, version them. Uh, when we push them, we push them versioned already. Okay. Um, and uh, it can it can do a bunch of other things, which I suspect Vadim is going to talk about yeah. uh, when, like, when we come to yeah, Harbor. I'm... Uh huh. Like I'm sure you want you worry about who can access those images. Like unless you intend yeah. for it to be public, that's going to be a big concern. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's also you can configure uh, some registries to uh, verify your signature. Is it really Whitney um, who pushed uh, the image, or somebody, uh, some malicious actor did it <laughs> for you? It uh, some registries also can uh, create as bomb. Uh, software bill of materials, and so on and so forth. But essentially, so the, the registry are backed. Uh huh. The registry can them. create s bombs. That's news to me. That's a registry yes. thing. I thought that happened. So I know, like build packs, for example, can create a software bill of materials when it's building, but the registry can do yeah, it. I mean, software bill of materials typically is created many times uh, because okay. uh, there are many places where you need to either create it or validate it or confirm for it, right? In CI CD pipelines, you would create SBOM, uh, link it to your uh, Git repository, and then you would uh, update it uh, later on with your image and so on and so forth. There are many places and registry is one of them. We have a comment from, from Jordan Gregory in chat. They say a must is the ability to store multi-platform image manifests. So there are several that don't, and that's why they don't use them. That's interesting. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you need to build them first uh, as multi-arc, um, mm -hmm. and then store them, and be able to store them. And he's right. Uh, not all of them do that. Or she. Yeah. 
<laughs> or she. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a theme of the show. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we talked about um, storing an image, of course. We talked about scanning and signing, um, access control, and now multi-architecture. Is there anything else that you feel like we're missing in terms of features to look for in a container registry? Oh, there is one important thing, and that's that uh, container image registries are going now in the direction that they can store other things, right? Ah. Uh, so it's not necessarily only... Uh, images that become containers. Uh, mm -hmm. You can store binaries now. You can store almost anything. And that's um, a lot of them are OCI compliant artifacts now is, is expanded exactly. to not just be about images. So I learned that Helm now can make OCI compliant, like, yeah, artifacts Helm is for a their great, charts. Great example, mm -hmm. right? W yeah. Why not store it there? Why, why keep two different registries, one for container images, the other one for something else? Yeah. Cool. Do you think, are we ready to hear from Vadim about, I think Vadim's going to talk about the distribution project first. Are we ready? Yes. I, I have actually one note, not directly okay. related with this, because I got some questions uh, where people asked, uh, hey, why didn't you include this in the previous episode or that? Uh, uh -huh. uh, we are including only CNCF projects. Here. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we might include non CNCF project, but that's all mostly to trick people into making <laughs> the wrong choice. Uh, so it's all about CNCF projects. We are not exploring all the registries in this episode uh, or in previous one, all the ways to build container images and whatever will be coming in the future, only and exclusively CNCF projects, simply because uh, it will take us a couple of years to go through all CNCF projects if we expand it. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm old. I, I need to retire at one, one moment. So, CNCF only. What would you even do with yourself without... <laughs> with, I can't imagine you in retirement. Um, we got a request to turn my volume down. I did turn it down manually on the microphone. Can Roy, can you tell me whether that was effective? Um, so I'm right now getting, getting out a timer. We're very serious around these parts that each presentation to last only five minutes. Um, and then we're going to end it, end it with love. But we can't to keep things fair. We're gonna we're gonna make sure it definitely is no longer than five minutes for each presentation. So with that, we'll bring Vadim on, who's going to talk about. So you get two five minute blocks. One where you're only allowed to bring up distribution. Don't you dare talk about Harbor. And then another one where you can talk about Harbor, and you're allowed to mention distribution. I'm I'm enjoying the power of this too much. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Are you ready, Vadim? I'm ready. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So the uh, Docker distribution is probably one one of the most you know, famous and popular registries out there because it was you know released basically just after Docker uh, you know saw saw the light and it evolved over time. And it's basically still today. It's still considered to be a reference implementation of um, um, of a registry. So it it is compliant with the Open Container Initiative specification OCI spec. It has a, a lot of you know functionalities that uh, can can be used as a um, as a as a as a toolbox. So it's it it, it serves two purposes, right? So one purpose is you can use it as a re registry out of the box, and the other purpose is you can use it as a as a toolbox for uh, for other registries. And that's why a lot of registries out there, a lot of products are built based on Docker distribution. This includes, for example, GitLab CI or GitLab uh, GitHub uh, Harbor is also based on on Docker distribution, and I think there are uh, uh, and Docker Hub is also built on uh, on Docker distribution. So a lot of you know, projects are using Docker distribution as the foundation when it comes to uh, storing and manage uh, storing container images. So, um, I, I often would like to see or uh, try to see the container container management uh, aspect more as a kind of a, as a transportation system. So, when you see it as a transportation system, there are a lot of different registries out there, right? And I would consider Docker distribution to be something like a, um, 
yeah, like a shop that you can use uh, to build a, I don't know, either a motorcycle or a bicycle, or you can even you know go, go by foot from A to B. Um, and other registries are more evolved. They provide, uh, for example, kind of like a public transport. You know, you can get from A to B, like a bus does or a train, or you can have a private um, uh, transportation, like your own car. So it gets you like door to door somewhere. Um, and Docker distribution is, is is kind of a more of a, like a toolbox, in my opinion, um, that you know coincidentally can be used uh, as a standalone registry. And um, yeah, so this is how I uh, would describe uh, Docker distribution. And so if you want to build something beyond what Victor told, right? What is the, the core feature of registry, like storing and, and, and retrieving images? So if you want to do something beyond this core functionality, you have to either implement it yourself or use tools that exist in, in the community or in is open source tools. For example, you know, if you want to have a UI for Docker distribution, you can find something on the internet that you know represents this in a, on an, in a nice UI. If you want to have authorization, there are also like dozen different concepts and implementations out there. I mean, Docker distribution is just a basic concept here. And so this is basically the, yeah, how I would describe the Docker distribution here. Are we already? Done with four minutes or five. five. Yeah. <laughs> you did. You managed it in three and a half minutes. Great job. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So, um, so anyone in chat, if you have questions about distribution, go ahead and put the questions there. We're going to have a whole Q&A section after we go through all of these presentations, and we'll get to those questions at that time. And so now, Madam, you're going to take off the distribution yeah. hat, put on a harbor hat, and do it again. Are you ready? All right. Let's talk about harbor. Let's talk about Harbor. <laughs> All right. So as I mentioned uh, previously, Harbor is also based on Docker distribution. And um, so you know, you might ask, what are the benefits of uh, of Harbor versus the plain vanilla Docker distribution? So, um, and in my opinion, the the very important part that that Harbor brings to, to the table versus Docker distribution is um, the added functionality to work in environments where um, you know you're not working on your own basically you're working in a team uh, in an organization and so you have functionalities like authorization and authentication that is built in Harbor which are let's say not existent or very limited in, in Docker distribution and so you have like a, a rich set of you know, role-based access control uh, functionalities that you can implement, uh, integrate with your authorization and authentication uh, provider like Azure Active Directory, LDAP, uh, OpenID Connect. So you can all integrate this into your corporate environment uh, quite easy. And um, on top of that, you have uh, a, a nice user interface that uh, everyone in your team or in your organization can access and log into it. We can uh, move to the UI, and I'll just explain what we see on the UI um, and uh, what's there to explore. So it's basically, there's a simple UI. You see the, the images in this demo environment. You can go ahead yourself and just enter demo.gohover.io, and you can sign up for an account, and you can experiment and try out a few functionalities here. It's a public instance, but don't store any sensible data there because there's going to be deleted uh, sooner or later or one day. So let's take a look at uh, the project. So the projects and their images. So nothing nothing fancy here if, when you you know enter it first. Uh, what's interesting is of course there's a uh, there is an option to have a vulnerability scan so you can have uh, scan your images for vulnerabilities. Um, we, co we call them interrogation services. And you can plug in a different different options here. Like this one is trivy, but you can uh, plug in other interrogation services. I think currently there are three or four existence. Um, and yeah, so you have the possibility to have uh, you know to add your members and and grant them permissions to different uh, to to this project. Uh, you have a very interesting functionality that I think quite unique to to Harbor is the replication service which allows you to replicate your images from, from Harbor, from your instance, to other registries. So it makes 
allows you to you know, replicate images to Docker Hub or from Docker Hub so that you have everything centrally in one place. Because it's, it happens sometimes that images uh, are removed from, from other registries and if, if you don't have access to them anymore, um, you cannot pull them anymore, right? So this allows you to replicate images to the instance and there's also even a possibility to proxy images. This means that if the image is not found locally in your local harbor instance, it will automatically look up the image on Docker Hub or any other registry and copy it to your harbor instance. Um, yeah, so the, the basic functionality is around the around storing and, and retrieving images for organizations and teams. So um, yeah, so you can organize and, and configure harbor uh, for, for this purpose, most likely. And this is actually in my opinion, one of the major advantages over Docker distribution, which provides you the, the toolbox. And here you have already um, well, um, opinionated solution here. Uh, I would say I'm already done with a short intro of Harbor. So I hope it was beyond five minutes or uh, under five minutes. He, yeah. did, he did a great did job. <laughs> <laughs> that thank was you. wonderful. I really liked seeing the UI. So um, thank you so much for representing two projects for us today. And we're going to put you back in your happy corner and bring on Alan to tell us about Dragonfly. So thank you. Welcome again, Alan. Thank you so much Hi. for being here. Hi. All right. Do you feel ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. I think and I need to share the screen. All right. I'm oh. Oh, it Summer has all. Summer has already shared the screen for me, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, today, my topic is accelerate the image distribution with Dragonfly. Dragonfly. Uh, rather than uh, introduce myself, I would introduce uh, the project more. Uh, Dragonfly is an intelligent peer-to-peer uh, -peer based image and file distributing uh, system. Uh, it also provides a variety of enterprise level. Uh, product features, and uh, and uh, Nidos is a sub project project of Dragonfly. Uh, it will distribute the images and uh, uh, just only when the process of the container uh, consumers the essential parts of the image. So it will advance the dis distribution time a lot. And here's the milestone of the project. Uh, Dragonfly is, uh, was uh, accepted to CNCF. Uh, on November the, uh, 2018, and uh, it is a uh, incubating uh, project uh, uh, now, and uh, we are planning to make it graduate uh, maybe this year and uh, next year. Uh, actually, uh, Dragonfly is widely adopted in, in, in China uh, from Enter Group, Alibaba, ByteDance, and some larger companies, and we wish that most internet companies and some others uh, could also use Dragonfly to distribute, distribute the uh, image. OK, uh, uh, thanks for the uh, Harbor presentation. And uh, this is the ac ac acceleration framework for image uh, with Dragonfly Nidos. Uh, I could introduce the uh, framework into two parts. Uh, the left one is the way we produce this uh, Nido's uh, image. Uh, um, the first one we know, everyone knows that the OCI image, OCI compatible images. And we, if we use Dragonfly and Nido's, we need to convert into this, uh, convert these images into some other formats. Uh, we can use uh, Nido's FY and some build kit and Nerd CTL just mentioned just now. Uh, and we can convert that into the formats and we can say, and we can try to push the images into Harbor. And that's quite easy. Uh, uh, you know what? Uh, Harbor provides a very convenient way to uh, implement the job uh, inside Harbor itself. So uh, we can set a job and Harbor can automatically convert the images for ourselves. Uh, the right part is how we consume the uh, the, the, the images and uh, we can uh, achieve the goal of accelerate the, the distribution. Uh, when, we, when we apply a deployment in the Kubernetes, uh, eventually 
the container D will trigger a uh, image pull and uh, start the container. Uh, the procedure is that container will uh, container the container D will uh, send a pull request, uh, image pull request uh, via NIDO snapshot. Uh, the NIDO snapshot uh, will of course it will access the harbor to get the images. Well, in the middle of the procedure, it's quite easy and it's quite more efficiently. Uh, uh, the NIDOS will just uh, pull the part which is essential for the process starting. So if an uh, image is about one gigabyte, maybe the process starting just needs uh, maybe 100 meg megabytes of data. So the, the NIDOS will, will just pull the mer uh, material, just essential material, which is uh, okay for the startup of the container. So it will totally reduce the uh, distribution time. And, and uh, I think it is quite uh, convenient for some uh, serverless uh, scenarios. One minute left. Okay, here's some statistics. Uh, when the image increases size, and uh, we can see that uh, the startup time of using that, uh, NIDOS image remains very short. So it's quite in, uh, convenient for users to, to enjoy that. And we uh, pick up several five, five cans of images in, in the Docker Hub. Uh, here's a very simple architect in the architecture of Dragonfly. We have manager, scheduler, uh, see the peer, and, uh, and the peers, local peers. And uh, if you want to get to know of more things, we can, you can, you can uh, uh, click the website of Dragonfly. And here is the future plan of Dragonfly. Uh, we will do more uh, aspects uh, of the uh, scheduler, manager, the FDM, and uh, some others. Okay. The I end. think I'm almost there. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really great. And we shared your slides in the chat, so everyone will be able to see the slides until the very end, at least. Yes, of course. Thank you. So, Yeah, thank you. You did a great job. Oops, I took you off. I meant to take your slides off. All right, we're bringing everyone back on, and we're going to answer some questions that folks have about registries. So yeah. I have a question off the bat, maybe to level set. When you say, Alan, that the goal of Dragonfly is to accelerate distribution, can you be a little more specific about what that means exactly? OK. Uh, actually, um, the normal procedure to pull an image um, it will directly pull the image from the from the from the harbor or container container reg the image registry, uh -huh. and it will consume lots of bandwidth of the registry, right? Okay. Uh, in large companies, we have lots of nodes, Kubernetes nodes in our clusters, uh -huh. uh, maybe tens of thousands of the nodes. Uh, uh -huh. If we just only have one harbor or one image registry, uh, the bandwidth will crash. Okay. Uh, so, so we need to use a more efficient way to distribute the image. First, we will use a P2P, peer-to-peer -peer network to uh, take advantage of every node's uh, bandwidth to accelerate the distribution. This is Excellent. the first way, yes, you know. And the second way is that, uh, you know, uh, if a container image size is more than one gigabyte, it will consume the, the bandwidth of your machine. But when we start the container, the, process start, the starting process maybe just need uh, maybe 10 megabytes of the material, right? Uh -huh. That's essential. So we can load the image just on demand. We ah. can just on demand. It is, a, it is what NIDOS exactly do. So, so we, can, we, can, we can accelerate the image distribution. I think it's fantastic, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. That was very helpful. And we have a question, too, from Jordan Gregory. The Dragonfly bit here, specifically the peer-to-peer -peer section, spins, feels very hands-wavy. Is this similar to the way bit torrents are set up? How are peers determined, and can that process be influenced? Yes. Uh, uh, can you hear me? That's for you. OK. Yeah. OK. I think it is similar to the way bit torrents are set up. And uh, um, when 
uh, when a cluster, maybe maybe uh, one job consists of uh, uh, one thousand container, consists of one contain uh, one thousand con container startup. Uh, the container are all the same. Uh, they are different. Uh, uh, they are all the they are all the instances of one job, and uh, where one hundred node will trigger to pull the image. They first will send the image to the peer to peer network. Then the network will the network will determine which node to uh, to pull which part of the image. Then it will automatically uh, cons construct a network. This is the way how the peers are determined. And uh, we have uh, uh, just like the in the architecture of Dragonfly, we have a manager and we have a scheduler uh, to control the procedure of the of the net P two peer to peer network. So the pro process could be influenced. Yes. Thank you. Now we have one from. Martin Fisher, nowadays with hyperscalers like Azure, AWS, GCP, having proper artifact registries as a service, at least with OCI support, what would make me want to manage a registry myself? Pricing only? I think this one is for Vadim. Yes. I think the, the pricing is not that, I mean, pricing is always relevant, right? So um, I wouldn't put it aside. I think what what makes, for example, Harbor special in this case is that um, when you, you know, just I know I know how, for the hyperscalers how how they work. So if you work in, in, in inside an organization and you don't want to have each project their own registry, you want to have a central registry. So there is no way around a, a central registry like Harbor. Uh, making it work with with ECR or, or ACR is is very very complicated. You know. Then you have to have all those, you know, policies and IAM permission sets that AWS or Azure provides. You have to implement it um, in 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 your workflow to make it work. And it's a bit of more cumbersome than just do it in Harbor, for example. And for me, these are those you know aspects that that really make uh, you know Harbor shine uh, versus uh, other registries. You know, like a proper uh, proper i uh, not proper uh, an im management system that is not tied to the hyperscaler this is one point uh, the other point is uh, having a central registry for your entire organization not just project by project and i think one third point um, that is really really underrated is the the possibility to have a proper um, garbage collection of images you know if you're in a, in a larger larger organization you end up with terabytes or petabytes of images within no time. And if you don't have a really good garbage collection, meaning that what images are creating policies, you know, cleanup policies, what images should be deleted and when should they be deleted. So if you don't have this po these policies, you have to do it maybe by hand one day, right? And there's going to be like millions and millions of, of images that you have or versions of images that you have. And this is also consuming a lot of space especially for larger, larger organizations. I, I really seen organizations that have uh, almost a petabyte of images because they cannot clean up or they don't know what to remove. Uh, Martin has a follow up question. Like even with the central Harbor being a central registry, would you still replicate images to data centers for traffic and latency? Um, yeah, it, it, it makes totally sense to, to combine a Harbor with other registries because for example, uh, the, the advantages of ECR is it's very easy integrated with, with with AWS. So when you you know reference an image in in, in your deployment in, in your AWS deployment, it, it's very easy to do it uh, this way. And replicating images to ECR might be an easier way to um, you know to be in in the, you know to, to be again in the, in the AWS world. Uh, versus just pulling it directly from Harbor. Excellent. So it's it's kind of uh, in that scenario, Harbor would be the the re the registry, the main registry, and then you would mirror it, right, to exactly. PCR 
yeah, yeah. Whatever. You would, you would uh, exactly, you would replicate images to ECR or ACR or whatever you know cloud environment you you have uh, to replicate images there because from from there it's easier to you know to have it in, into in, in the in the pipeline and and deploy it, and then it's also matching a bit the permission sets that you have there. And I think, uh, yeah, I think the Martin's question about the replication is related to the Jordan's question. Um, yeah, the, the question about the about the Martin's. Uh, yes, I think every uh, lots of companies met issues when using the peer to peer network. Um, actually, I need to say that a Dragonfly is not only a P two P network. Uh, we also provide another mechanism to pull the images just on demand. It will also uh, in, in 3D, increase the uh, distribution experience for you. Uh, and uh, another thing is that uh, although the harbor uh, provides the replication services for the image for large data centers, uh, in large companies, uh, there is also a very uh, large cluster consists of maybe tens of thousands of nodes, uh, just one one cluster so many so many nodes uh, we can still match the issues of distribution distribution latency or some uh, denial of service of the registry so we still need to use uh, peer to peer and uh, some on demand technology to improve the experience since uh, some some companies are very sensitive to the uh, scaling experience of the instances so uh, dragonfly and niders i think I, uh, can make it to provide the better experience. Yeah. Um, George has a question. Can you publish artifacts like a jar to an OCI registry? Vadim? Um, you could. This is uh, no, no problem. There is a, a project that's called ORAS, which is a, you know, it's a CLI and SDK that you allows you to wrap everything in um, a, a, in an OCI container. But the problem here is if you wrap a jar in an OCI, um, it, it will be really difficult for you to, to, to get it uh, if, uh, from other methods, for example, from Maven, you know, using it in Maven or using it in Gradle would be much more difficult to get the jar out, out there, you know. And so the only way if you would like to store other types of artifacts in, in OCI registry is to have an implementation in Maven or Gradle for uh, in, 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 the, in the case of Java that is capable of uh, pushing and pulling images uh, or OCI compliant images, uh, I know. So this is this is actually the, the, the problem. Why um, technically you can do it, but practically it makes no sense because um, you know, the tools that you normally use with Java are not capable of dealing with OCI at the moment. Maybe there are some some people already tried out with RPM packages. Um, you know, fetching or RPM packages directly from OCI registries, but for for Java and JAR, um, I haven't seen any solution yet. So, in other words, it's more that other tools are lacking behind um, that concept, right? Yeah, I think nobody tried it yet so far, or or, or you know, deemed deemed to have it necessary to to support uh, those types of artifacts in, in OCI. Jordan has a comment um, that they use Harbor and they do use replication to cluster local harbor, harbor instances for speed. So they do that instead of something like Dragonfly. Yes, I think it's, uh, it's very convenient uh, uh, to do replication in different clusters. I agree with that, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not, uh, uh, we, 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 we have also, we, we have some scenarios that we can also use Dragonfly, yes. Jordan, how many nodes are in the cluster that you're working with and using um, Harbor replication for? And I guess a question for you, Alan, then, is like at what point, uh, like how big does a cluster need to be for Dragonfly to really like show its value? Yes, it's some kind of the um, factor I think we need to make sure. And uh, the secondly, we can, uh, uh, Jordan uh, introduces that maybe some machine learning images are quite quite large, so so we can use the on-demand loading to to speed up the image image booting. Yes. Okay. 
That's all the questions I from chat. Yeah. Exactly. There are still a few minutes left, so if somebody can type fast, uh, <laughs> we might be able to answer one more question or something like that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Victor's in the sun, and he's a proper vampire. He's going to melt in front of our eyes. <laughs> we, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Jordan said to answer my question for machine learning clusters, it's very dependent on the loads at the time, but the large images would run on around 50 nodes or so. Okay, I think uh, the replication service of the Harbor is quite a, uh, is quite easy for uh, for enterprises to use, and the largest gear uh, could fit both for Harbor. Uh, Yes, the f machine learning clusters that depend on the loads at the time. Yes, mm -hmm. you can try NIDOS. <laughs> the image format is different, and we can just load the image on demand. Uh, so if, if the image is more than 10 gigabytes, maybe you, can, you need just to load uh, a, only a few materials of the image. So the boot time fires, fires uh, a lot, yeah. Excellent. So today's episode, we've compared technologies that all build on each other. So it's not really an apples. I think it's really never going to be an apples to apples comparison because the two technologies that do the exact same thing shouldn't in exist in theory, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we are actually, we are coming later to apples yeah. and apples type of uh, tools. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> but so far, Essentially, both in previous episodes and this one, one can easily combine uh, and often should combine two or even three, right? What we saw mm -hmm. in the in the last week's episode, okay. K-Builder works magnificently well with uh, with Paqueta, with build, right? With uh, uh -huh. build, build packs. packs, yeah. And in this case, Harbor and Dragonfly uh, could be a good combination and, as well. Yeah, and distribution, actually, just... <laughs> The whole stack. The distribution power. Uh, we do have it's, it's another question. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, we do have a, another question from George. And Harbor cross account replication need to configure ask you need to configure access keys instead of instance profiles. Do you have any plans to support instance profiles for cross account replication? Um instance profile. I think there's as, as far as I understand from from the question, and it's a bit difficult. Like instance profile is something on on the EC2 level or AWS level here, um, and uh -huh. I think the question is when I remember it because it was asked a few times in the community, is has something to do um, with uh, with Docker distribution. So there's an underlying functionality that depends on Docker distribution. Um, and when it when it's when it's going to be in Docker distribution, Hubble will support it, of course. Excellent. Uh, Is it time for closing uh, comments from our guests? Are you ready for that? Yeah, I think closing uh, comments are in order. Yes. All right, uh, Adam, you get just a sentence or two. Wrap up why why people should vote for. I guess you <laughs> distribution alone and then distribution with Harbor on top. Well, yeah, to, to clarify, sorry, before you answer, <laughs> yeah. uh, just kind of like to put more variety. If people vote for distribution, they're voting for uh, Docker Cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and then there is the other two choices. Mm. Do you want, Victor, should you do the, the pitch for Doc, the wrap up for Docker Hub? Uh, I mean, I can, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, What's a vote for Docker Hub look like? What's that? Uh, Docker Hub is the, you know, the best or most well-known uh, registry. Uh, I'm not going to go into how good or bad it is. Uh, that would be for a different discussion, but <laughs> it's it's what it all started, right? Uh, whomever started working with Docker years ago probably started using uh, Docker Hub as a registry. Now, uh, it's a SaaS solution that means that you might have latency issue with that. You might have other issues, uh, but it's uh, it's equivalent of uh, I don't know. I was about to say Google for search, right? Everybody when they say search, uh, think Google. Uh, that's mm -hmm. how I see Docker. Ubiquitous, Hub. yeah. Uh, yes. Now, feature-wise, uh, it's not not that 
that rich as, as some other solutions. Excellent. Or it's not that close to your data center or uh, cluster as, as other solutions. Excellent. Vadim, why should people vote for Harbor? Well, you should use Harbor because it's a, a most feature rich and most popular container registry out there, you know, beyond uh, probably Docker Hub as the second choice. And it's well suited for, uh, you know, everyone who wants to use uh, the registry with more than one person. Excellent. And Alan, why should people vote for Dragonfly? Okay, two parts. Uh, P2P network to save your bandwidth. And the second, uh, on-demand image loading to speed up the container start time. Just to enjoy it and have a try. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm going to say goodbye to our guests, and, and Victor and I are going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate you both very much. That's it. So what's next? Next, next is, is uh, voting. Voting. So we're going to, last week we did a Twitter poll. That seemed to work out just fine. And uh, so we'll make a new Twitter poll, probably on my Twitter this time. And we will, uh, so you can follow me and actually Victor too. You can see our handles. And then I'll put the poll on my Twitter and we'll link to it in the comment section of this video. So you can just look for it in the comments, the link, and, and register your votes. And whatever you choose, we're going to build at the beginning of the next episode. So we'll use Cloud Native Build Packs, which were already chosen, in combination with one of the technologies we talked about today. So make your voice heard. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Victor? I think that, that's a wrap, I think. That's a that's wrap. That's a wrap. See you all uh, next week. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you everyone who watches the recording. See you next week. Bye.